When you have a pile of miniatures you have yet to paint, and you back a Kickstarter for a bunch of miniatures you, you will have to paint, it might be time to put down that brush. And just watch The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with enamel and sarcasm. Every week we bring you on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are new guarantees. I'm your host, Mike Kafis, and joining me this episode is my buddy, my bestest friend in the whole wide world, Peter Bryant, from somewhere in the bowels of Washington State. And on this episode, oh, hi, say hi, Peter. Hey, everybody, from Washington State. <laughs> I'm in Yakima. They call it the Palm Springs of Washington. It's not the Palm Springs of Washington. It's not the Palm Springs of Washington. <laughs> On this episode, we are talking with our good friend Trevor Atridge, and it, he is a longtime table co- tabletop gamer and a the principal designer of the Breachstorm miniature game. Yeah, thanks, guys. So, I'm happy welcome, to be here. Welcome aboard. Yeah. So you came highly recommended by uh, by Mr. Reinhardt. He interviewed you recently on our sister podcast, War Gaming Recon. Uh, and he said, you got to have this guy on. He's, he's, he's a really good guest. So we we're like, all right, man, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so, uh, so we, yeah, uh, no guarantees here. No, guarantees. <laughs> hey, if you, if you flop, it'll just be on him. Don't worry. about Yeah. It. We'll just, oh, worry, good. <laughs> all right. I'm feeling better already. <laughs> yeah. No pressure on you. This is all on Jonathan. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, you know, we, we, we don't do a whole lot of shows on uh, war gaming or miniatures. And I thought, well, what the hell? Yeah, that's a good idea. We, we don't really hit that, uh, that pocket of our audience, but there are, you know, there are chunks of our audience that like miniatures and, um, you know, it's it's good to talk to somebody who actually gets them made. I don't know if you make them yourself, but I know you get them made. Um, you have a you have a game out on Kickstarter that does that. So, um, I guess you know what we should start with is a question I always have about war gaming because there's different kinds. There's all these different flavors. Like you can't just say war gaming because uh, once you get into the the people who actually war game. Um, you know that you've got this faction of people in this fashion so there's like you know there's skirmish there's historical there's board um you know you have things like battletech and warhammer and and, and blah, blah, panzer blitz and and i think napoleon was was one of them so can you school us a little bit on the different types of war game like you just broad stroke it yeah sure um so I think uh, when most people talk about wargaming, um, they sort of have an idea of like a large scale battle that plays out on a table. Um, and that's where a lot of historicals come in. Um, sometimes they'll have miniatures that sort of represent a whole uh, you know, unit of, of hundreds of, of men on the table. Um, and, and those will operate together as uh, you know, sort of one single game piece. Um, I guess if anybody's in the chat there um, and you know, doesn't know much about wargaming and hasn't really been introduced to it, it's sort of uh, it's kind of like board gaming, but instead of having a board, uh, you typically play on you know sort of a flat um, area, and then uh, typically the uh, you know relationships between all the pieces on the table are measured in true distance. So usually you'll use inches um, or you know another another. Um, unit of measurement uh, to measure between the pieces. Um, and so it, it lets you for sort of more free form positioning uh, than like a typical board game where you'd have sort of a grid on the table. There are miniatures games that use uh, sort of that grid system, um, but it, you know, makes them much closer to a board game than kind of a traditional miniatures game. So, um, I have, go ahead. I have one, I have one question. So uh, it's like, I'm vision envisioning this. Uh, what I think of uh, when I think of war gaming, and to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever truly played uh, like a true a war game type game. <gasps> Even, I, I know, I know. Like Pete's what? played Car Wars. I know you love Car Wars, which could be considered a type of uh, war gaming, couldn't it? Or maybe, uh, I don't know. But all, all I think is... Kind of a skirmish. It's more of a skirmish game. I, I think of like, you know, uh, you know how you put your, uh, you put uh, uh, like Game of Thrones, you know, they put their little pieces down. Like, oh, we got this many people in King's Landing, <laughs> this many people here. And, and uh, you know, hey, you knock a couple of pe- <laughs> guys off the board. I mean, that's basically it, right? Yeah, th- I think you nailed it. That's perfect. Oh, yes. We don't need no farther. No right, more hey, questions. Thanks for We've joining us it. this evening. You've just enjoyed <laughs> another episode of the Mythwits. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's something like that. Uh, you know, it, it, 
like I said, it's sort of a very free form experience. You can, you know, sort of move your, your pieces around on the table, however you want. Um, and I'll, you know, kind of the, the, the core uh, of the hobby is, you know, recreating battles. Obviously it's called war gaming. So um, that's, uh, that's, you know, sort of what, what people are out there to do. Um, or I guess miniature war gaming in particular, but there are, like you mentioned, um, there's a lot of, you know, sort of sub genres within the overarching category of games. So um, there are games like we were talking about before that, you know, sort of stretch over a wide area and you're playing with very small scale models. Um, I know some games, you know, move down to as small as six millimeters, uh, which means that it, you, um, it's typically, um, you know, a human will be about six millimeters tall, which is, you know, teeny tiny. Um, and even <laughs> and even smaller if you're, um, you know, getting into uh, something like you want to uh, reenact like naval engagements and things like that. And you have these uh, pieces that are meant to represent ships that are, you know, hundreds of feet long. That'll be two inches. And you'll have um, you sort of your, your table to represent square miles of space on a, in a battle space. Um, but uh, the game that Breedstorm is, is a much smaller scale version. It uh, plays on a three foot by three foot board, and the scale is uh, 30 millimeters. So um, one you know, individual standard sized human uh, is meant to measure about 30 millimeters tall, so about an inch. Um, and, and these are the miniatures you normally see with like D&D and stuff like that. They're like they're like stand pretty much the standard size or the most yep. standard size. Yeah, 30 millimeters is going to be, uh, you know, between 25 and 30 millimeter typically is going to be the most common scale you'll see for um, miniatures, you know, it, it, across the genres. Like you said, um, you know, that's where like D&D &D is. Um, that's where the most popular miniatures game uh, like Warhammer is. Um, and you'll, you, if you go into, you know, a game store, you'll see 30 millimeter miniatures all over the place. So this falls right into that scale. Right, right, right. And then, um, you know, do you... Do you see players that uh, cross the genre very much or not the genre, but like the different styles? Like, do you have people that play all kinds of war games and skirmish games and board games and stuff? Or do people generally do you generally tend to see them sticking within like their like core thing? Like I'm a I'm a reenactor. I, I only do, you know, uh, revolutionary war games. Or do you see people playing a lot of different styles? I think that really depends on the individual gamer. Um, some people. Uh, you know, really like to stick within their genre and that's what they like. And um, some people are more interested in sort of how games play mechanically and they're, you know, they sort of like to branch out a little bit. Um, I know I myself, uh, I play, you know, a couple different, you know, games that are in that sil similar 30 millimeter scale, but I also delve into um, games like Star Wars Armada, which is, um, you know, obviously it's a Star Wars game, but it's meant to represent, you know, spaceship naval combat. So you have Star Destroyers and things like that. And it's a very, um, it's a sort of a very different aesthetic experience to having soldiers on a battlefield. Um, but you know, I like, I enjoy the mechanics of the game and, and how the pieces interact. Um, I think a little more than I do, you know, the, the setting and the overarching um, look and feel. Yeah, I'm, I'm a mechanics nut, but I, I tell you, you know, Mike mentioned before, like Car Wars, uh, my favorite style of uh, skirmish war, you know, war game, board game, whatever, uh, is, is Car Wars. And I like, uh, I love Battletech. And like any kind of mecha game, yeah, a mecha uh, where, 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 where you, you put mecha down and you're like you're just battling it out. Uh, and it sounds to me like, uh, or it looks to me that you know that um, Beach Storm kind of is, seems to be somewhat similar in that you know you, you're you're playing different people uh, instead of like these uh, like you know generic squad like Squad A is going to attack here. It's this character, this character, this character, this character, and it seems like it's kind of the same way. Uh, yeah, so uh, so um, like I mentioned, it's a it's a thirty millimeter scale game, and it um, the the games are sort of meant to represent um, small scale skirmishes between special ops teams uh, in this sci fi universe. It's you know thousands of years in the future, um, and uh, you, you'll before the game starts, sort of a, a staple of miniatures gaming is um, force selection or you know army creation, um, and you'll have a lot of usually a lot of flexibility with what units you bring to the table. And, and that's, you know, really, um, it's one of my favorite parts of the genre. And it's, um, I think a lot of people get really into the minutia of what units you pick. Um, but you'll build a team, usually it's about six to eight uh, individual units. Um, and, you know, those can be soldiers uh, that have, you know, different skill sets or unique characters that'll have their own special rules. Um, 
And you'll try to be, you know, selecting uh, troops that have abilities that are more conducive to the game plan you want to play and the objectives that your team's trying to complete. Cool. Very neat. Um, so the figures that you have, uh, are, do, do people need to paint them themselves? Are these, are these, do they come painted or, or is it, you know, like, uh, do they paint them any way they want to or, or how, how do your figures come? Uh, yeah, so they come uh, unassembled and unpainted, so you can, yeah. uh, you know, you'll do that themselves. They are, um, they're cast in resin, uh, and they are pre-colored, so each faction in the game has a different, um, you know, color resin material. So if you don't want to paint them, you don't quite have to, um, they'll, you know, they'll still be colored, so it's not just you're playing with drab gray plastic guys or something like that. Okay. Um, but they, obviously they look great when they're painted, so... We uh, hope follow, everybody follow will up, paint their questions. Follow-up yep. question. Um, I kind of suck at painting, so um, I'd like to have – how much uh, for you to paint my, my figures for me? I want you. <laughs> I want you, man. <laughs> me You're specifically? My guy. You're my guy. <laughs> well, I do. I did use the commission paint miniatures back in the day. I think if you if you uh, my Facebook page is probably still up for my commission painting days, so if you can find that, you can uh, hit me up there, and I'll quote you. <laughs> You know, Mike, there are, you know, it's, uh, there are some game stores that sell miniatures that you can go to and they have people that will commission paint miniatures for you at a very reasonable price. Hey, remember, remember when they had the, the, the quarters, the state quarters, and you could mm -hmm. get them and, and there was a version that was painted. No, remember remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, bought those. I bought the painted okay. ones. Yeah, the painted ones, right. Yeah. Painted. Uh, All right, so, uh, so you said yours are resin. Um, so why not... Uh, I, because I think there's a little bit of a debate between resin or, or pewter. Um, and, and what are the differences? Like, I mean, why would somebody use one versus the other or manufacture one versus the other? What are the kind of the pros and cons of, of pewter and, and plastic? Uh, pewter and plastic or pewter and resin? Oh, I'm sorry, resin. Sorry, Re resin, resin or sure. plastic or I don't know. Y you tell me. You're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, um uh, so resin uh, sort of it tends to hold detail a little better than the other um, materials. Uh, so it, it creates very cl you know crisp um, casts when you when you reproduce uh, miniatures in it. Um, it also tends to be easier to assemble than especially than pewter. Pewter can be a little tricky because um, your parts have some weight to them, and they you know they essentially try to do their own thing. Whereas with resin, mm -hmm. you can usually um, you, you know you can glue them together very easily. Um, and they're very easy to customize because it's sort of easy to manipulate. You know, resin you can cut right. and you can shave really easily. Uh, whereas pewter, you have to kind of have to work at it a lot, and it's really tough. Um, we do have some pewter parts in some of our miniatures that have uh, sort of long pokey bits um, that would break off more easily if they were resin. Uh, for the most part, they're, they are resin. Um, and the resin's pretty robust. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people are worried about breaking their figures. Um, resin is very light so even if you drop it it doesn't tend to impact with uh you know with a lot of energy so um it doesn't usually um it doesn't usually you know shatter or uh, or break apart like a pewter miniature would right okay all right um and then so are yours being are they are they cast are they they molded or are they being 3d printed how are, how are you having them manufactured um, yeah, so the, they're manufacturing a process called spin casting. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll use a silicone mold, and um, the miniatures for the parts will sort of be laid out within you know cavities in that mold, and um, it'll get uh, vulcanized, so you know heated up and spun around really super fast. Mm -hmm. And the resin will be poured in, and you know centrifugal force will will spread it out into all the cavities, and they'll let that harden and, and take it apart. So. Um, it's uh, you know pretty quick to do. It doesn't take a long time to do a, a you know a production run, and um, it, it ends up with you know like I said, very you know clean, crisp sculpts, which is awesome. Nice, nice. And are, are you having this done overseas or here? Where no. Having... So I, one of the coolest things for me about the project is that um, it's almost entirely uh, U.S. based. So nice. there's one part that we get from the U.K., which are the bases that the little figures go on. Every other part is uh, made in the U.S. <laughs> okay. So so you found it was it was more uh, cost efficient to do it. You found somebody would be more cost efficient to do it here than to do it there and have them shipped over. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, and there's uh, so many additional hassles that you have to deal with when you're dealing with overseas vendors. So mm. we're just, we're going to do that. Keep everything in the States. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, and I noticed you have, you have, so the game comes with a board, right? It comes with uh, 2d boards, right? Or to a 2d board. 
Um, so the, it doesn't have a board in and of itself. You just play on a, a flat surface. Okay. Um, but it does have, uh, it has templates that you use to represent the terrain that's on, on the battlefield. So uh, a lot of games will have you sort of supply your own terrain. It's kind of, you know, an afterthought to the game. Oh, also maybe make your board look better and give your guys something to move around. Um, but in Breachstorm, the terrain sort of uh, was kind of central to the design. So um, before you actually play the game, you'll take turns placing uh, the terrain features out on the table. So that's kind of part of the strategy. You can try to block off where your opponent can go. Um, and so those are, yeah, those templates are included in the game. All right, so are those 2D, 2D templates, 3D templates? Uh, yeah, they're 2D templates. Okay. So in other words, you would make a board. You'd make any board. You make the board yourself, right? Like a, like a play mat or whatever. Sure. And you put yep. the templates down mm -hmm. and then you play. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, and then I, I would imagine that, that that helps keep the cost of the whole thing down and people can use. Because a lot of people have their own play mats. You know, a lot of people have their right. own. Like they already have like a, a hundred you know game yeah. boards they can use to put out so yeah and they um, a lot of some people have their own terrain if you know if they like to use that they're they're free to do so but if you you know if you've never um you know gotten into miniature gaming before the terrain can be kind of daunting if you're looking at a lot of these like really super gorgeous boards that are out there and you know it takes dozens of hours to build them on top of you know learning the rules and putting your models together like that's a lot so Right. Um, we just made it as simple as possible. Uh, you know, there's 2D templates. You can use the more the prettier stuff if you want to, but um, you know, essentially in that way, it's uh, it's a lot more like a board game than a lot of other miniatures games. Okay, all right, very cool. I um back in the day, I'm old, so back in the day, I played uh, uh back before Battle. Uh, it's Battle Tech now. It was Battle Droids before they got sued, and um, <laughs> they. They had, uh, I was at this convention, I bought the, the book and um, I bought the templates, these templates for iron on. So you could iron on hex, uh, hex patterns onto a sheet. So you'd get a big white sheet and you got like 30, 40 pages of this, these iron ones and I could iron it on and make a big board out of a bed sheet. And, um, <laughs> and then I took, I took foam, took one inch thick foam and cut hexes, like drew hex patterns on them and then cut them out and then stack them together and put like pens in them. And that was a lot of fun. It didn't look, I mean, sure. it didn't, it <laughs> it was all white, you know, that's, with some, on that's it. some hero scape type stuff there. Is that the game yeah. where it gave you all the hexes you put together? Yeah. But this like was, so, this was like low tech. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> this was, you know, um, it was it was it wasn't even Home Depot. It was Heckinger's, I think, where we bought the foam from and cut it out. And I didn't use a hot knife. I used like a knife, like a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. You just covered it in styrofoam dust yeah. for days yeah. afterwards. It awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's in every it crevice. But it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, uh, this sounds like a step up from that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so who, who does who does your heart, art and writing? I mean, do you have do you do a lot of this yourself? Are you are you also an artist? Because um, there's some people they. They, you know, if they're, they're an independent game developer, they do a lot of their own stuff. Uh, at what level do you do? Are you just a designer, writer, artist? What, what all do you do for the game? Yeah, so um, I like to tell people I have, you know, the artistic talent of like a goldfish. So, um, so you I'm and Mike. Definitely... <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> oh, oh, man, did you hear that? It was shots being fired <laughs> out in the distance. No, he knows. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's true so yeah I don't, I don't do any of the artwork uh, or the sculpting myself um all of the writing i do um and then the rules design as well that's uh that's my department if i were going to do a wargaming figure it would be a stick man like a stick, stick man, man. And, yeah that'd, that'd perfect be, maybe of a paper stuff. clip you'd bent it around well, that's that sounds like a lot. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a, like. You know, no, I went outside. I found a stick. <laughs> a stick man, yeah. Stick man. I um, you know, one of the things I've been using uh for for figures. Uh, this just came up because some of you were talking in the, in the you guys were talking about what you've been using. Some people in the chat room were talking about what they've been doing. Um, I like there's these things called flat plastic managers, which are cool. Um, plastic. They're, yeah, it's plastic. It's like a clear plastic, and they've printed miniatures on it, and you stick them into a base. But they're yep. hard to see. They're kind of hard to see. Like, <laughs> like if you, if you get down and you look at them, you can really kind of see it. But like, it's not as good as a, like a like a like a miniature miniature like a like an actual figure. Yeah, um, yeah. There's you know, there's so. no substitute for the, having the actual 3D you know figure on the table. I have That's seen true. some of the the flat plastic stuff. They look pretty good. Um, 
if you do like if you're doing like um like units of guys and it's very small scale um mm-hmm. i've seen them some look pretty good from a distance i think so right. uh <laughs> jonathan reinhardt is in the chat room and uh he is saying a that your your video is sublime so congratulations on that that's and just my glowing features <laughs> He's also saying uh, he was asking, "What is what are you using for equipment and setup?" Uh, Jonathan, uh, I don't know what that means exactly, or because maybe he was talking about something we were talking about earlier. Equipment. Well, I have a yeah. Well, uh, if he's asking about the technical equipment for this evening, I have a Logitech C920 webcam. Oh, that's what he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we well, use. Wait, wait. Yeah. Hey, it's not everybody uses. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for derailing the show. Back to you, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all right, look. So, um, so, so, I'm assuming you do most of the writing for the game, then. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Writing and design, basically, and then you hire out artists to do all the fun because your artwork is fantastic for the game. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it came out awesome. We have a team of uh, freelancers that I'm working with to do the artwork and the 3D sculpting, and, and they're like magicians. So, Trevor, just so okay. you know, where uh, the images you provided us are being displayed on Facebook. Uh, I don't know if you see the feed, but uh, I do. I'm looking yeah, at it right, right now. There you go. See, fancy schmancy. It's very so people, nice. People are getting an idea of what it looks like, which it does. Yeah. It looks very good. Right. Uh, okay, so so the so the figures, right? So you said you have other, you have people doing your sculpts for you. So I'm assuming they do them in 3D and then print the 3D molds. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. so the the initial sculpting is in, um, you know, a 3D um, software, and then that gets 3D printed out, uh, and those 3D prints get um, used. There's a couple stages, but those get used to create the spin cast molds we were talking about. And just just to uh, geek out a little bit, are they using ZBrush? Um, yeah, I don't off the top of my head know what software they're using. I think I work with a bunch of different sculptors. I can't okay, imagine so they, they all use exactly the same right, thing. Right, yeah, right. there might be some Maya or whatever Blender okay. in there or something. Okay. Um, okay, then and then so here comes the fun part. So who <gasps> does who does it's, and that's fun, it's a fun part uh, of, of any project who does like how do you do your marketing and, and fulfillment? Like, are you do you like buy some pizza and beers and and when the stuff comes <laughs> in you pack it you and your friends package it up and ship it out or do you actually have somebody doing your fulfillment for you um nope that first thing you said is basically how it goes <laughs> beer, pizza. Beer, pizza and beer. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah we'll uh you know have a little packaging party and put everything together every time we'll do a, a print run um we're pretty sort of low tech on the on you know the operation side so um right. you know it'll take us an afternoon to uh to get through everything Okay, cool. Um, and then, and who does your like marketing and stuff? Like, is this is this you? Are you doing it right now? Is this is this That's, a marketing yeah, plan? Yeah, this okay. is uh, marketing in action right now. All right, fantastic. Everybody, right. go to breedstorm.com. Yeah, absolutely. Buy Do some it. miniatures. I, so, like, I, you know, <laughs> we've been talking all around, all around this thing and like how they get made. So, so tell us, just get me into into breedstorm. How do you what? what is this how do you play this game like let's take me from the beginning like i i i get this really cool box looks nice and i open a box and i take the stuff out and then what i'm gonna also as you're doing that i'm gonna see if i can share the the page the, um, the kickstarter page yeah the kickstarter page okay All right, so yeah just tell us i mean like how, how does this game play like what, what are we looking at here sure so uh, like I said in in uh, before, um, the games uh, you know in a sci-fi setting. So um, all of the games represent sort of operations by these um, sort of black ops teams of of special operatives. Um, it's sort of a cold war between um, you know these interstellar uh, organizations, and um, so they're dispatching you know these teams to you know retrieve intelligence uh disrupt their you know enemies operations um and you're in command of uh, of one of these teams so um you'll create a team like we were talking about before uh, of a couple miniatures you'll you know pick you can pick the troops that you want depending on what skills you need uh for your mission um you'll actually pick the objectives that you're trying to complete so 
Um, each player has an attack and a defense objective. And before the game starts, you'll determine who's going to attack and they'll use their attack objective and the other player will be defending and have a defense objective. So your mission objectives are different depending on you know which role you're playing. So all of the objectives are asymmetric. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, you can also sort of customize your troops with upgrades as well that you can, uh, that will have different effects. And then um, you'll set up the table like we talked to, uh, like we talked about, and uh, you know, you'll set up your forces on the table. You'll have a zone um, on the battlefield where you're, you'll, you'll uh, set up your troops. Um, now, sort of the core of the game um, is that you have units in your team called field officers, and these are sort of the commanders that are uh, going to be leading the operation. Um, and you'll have regular troops called infantry. Um, and you and your opponent will take turns acting with field officers. Um, and while they're, uh, you know, they're acting, they'll have a certain number of action you know, tokens that they can spend to do things like move and fire their weapons and, you know, interact with uh, scenario elements like uh, computer consoles and stuff like that. Um, they can, the officers can order your infantry around at the same time. So typically they'll be able to off, um, to order two or three of your infantry and uh, they'll sort of act together as a group. Um, like I said, you have six to eight models in your team. So typically you'll have two field officers and you'll go back and forth activating one field officer at a time. Um, so it's sort of a happy medium between games where, you know, one player moves all of their guys and the other player does the same thing uh, versus games where like you're taking turns with individual models. It's kind of a, a hybrid between the two. And those are two very common sort of turn structures in miniatures games for people who aren't uh, familiar. Okay. So when you say objectives, so like, would you put, say, would, say, would there be like an, like, I don't know, what, what's an objective? What would be an example of objective? Like kill their leader or get an item or, or contain an area. I mean, what, what kind of objectives can you have? Yeah. So um, the objectives are actually determined by, um, you know, cards that you'll pick. So the card, you, you look at the card, it'll have all of the information for um, that particular objective on it. Um, and there'll be things that, you know, your team is tasked to do. So things like, uh, there's one where you, you know, there are buildings on the, on the table. You have to detonate the buildings. You have to plant explosives and blow them up. Um, there's one where there's a, um, you know, a VIP that you have to, you know, you know, rescue and, and get off the map. Um, there's one where, you know, there's an intelligence package that's on the table that your team's going to have to retrieve. Um, and all of those objectives will have, you know, particular scenario elements that you have to interact with. Um, they'll also have some other bonuses um, in abilities called tactical assets you can use. So if you want to pick uh, an objective in order to get access to those bonuses, you can do it that way. Um, if you want to sort of play more narratively, you and your opponent can, can kind of agree on a combination of objectives that work together for whatever scenario you want to play. Um, you can kind of do it however you want. Okay. And then do you know each other's objectives? Like when I, when I play, I, I know, do I know what your objectives are? Do you know what my objectives are? And I'm trying to get mine done and keep you from getting yours done. Uh, yeah, so the game's entirely open information. So everything, okay. you know, you, everything's known between the two players. And a lot of the objectives will place uh, elements on the board that you're, you know, you'll have to sort of um, interact with in order to score. So, you know, you'll, you'll know before the game starts. Okay, and there's no game master. It's it's like a person against another part. It's like, it's 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 like head to head, right? It's yeah, not, yeah. It's you, a no sort of competitive one v one. Yep. Okay. The, the rules are the game master. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that works. Um. All right. So, Mike, do you want to talk about this page at all? Here, you got this. You're showing the page. Oh uh, yeah, I'm uh, about three quarters of the way done now. Whew, we is you got all, like got yourself a long page there. Yeah, there's some stuff going on. <laughs> so i'm so you got these creatures so you got these like insectoid type creatures the the uh, volgox is that what they are yeah uh, yeah. The yeah the the faction's called the volucrid host um but that's sort of uh sort of nominally the goal of the um kickstarter is to uh, raise funds to create the miniatures for this third faction so um currently the game has two factions you can play uh, the homeworld confederacy which is sort of a technologically advanced human faction uh and there's run through our prides which are um you know sort of felinoid alien you know cat people um and the volucrid are the third faction for the game they're uh you know more insectoid um and they're cool they're they um 
actually use their own troops as sort of a resource. So they'll uh, uh, they'll actually eat each other to uh, to generate tokens they can spend during the game. Okay. Um, all right. So. So this Kickstarter is an expansion. Um, if if I were coming across this for the first time, you know, I'd, I'd like, oh, this looks really cool, but I don't have the base game. Um, what would I do? How would I how would I get that and back this and and all that? Um, how does um, that play together? Yeah, so there's a pledge level for a two player um, starter set uh, on the Kickstarter campaign. Um, and additionally, uh, you can sort of get everything a la carte if you want. So if you just want one particular faction and you know your friend's going to get another one or something like that, you can um, you can get those separately or you can you know get everything you want as add-ons essentially. Uh, so okay, I'm, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm well, I'm going back up now to the I, so I saved everyone's eyes, so I went back to you, Trevor, to, before I zoomed all the way up to the top of the page. But now, <laughs> uh, real quick, before uh, yeah, we're about nine thirty, so um, before we kind of switch over to the game, um, what uh, what are our um, our pledge levels here? What do we got? Sure. So um, we have uh, the the sixty dollar level there. That is. Um, for the core set for the new faction so if you already have the existing models uh, you can you know just get in that level and you'll um that'll just get you the stuff for the new faction um and we also have uh, that two-player starter set as well that i mentioned um and then some um it's called a faction allegiant pledge level which is sort of uh all of the, a um a faction core set and all of the expansions for that particular faction so if you just run, really want to get hard into one faction um you can do that and you can add on um you know a diff additional uh copies of that pledge level or the other expansions that you want at the end if you uh if you want to go that way oh, okay so uh buck 20 gets you the two-player starter set mm -hmm. nice 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 and uh, I mean, if you're already spending a buck twenty, you might as well go for the two forty and just get the all out war. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> yeah. Which, yes, hey, that'll... You, got, you got seven backers on that, so good going. Good on you. <clears throat> so some of the things I was looking at um, in some of the notes that you had, you had um, uh, a, it's, you listed a unique activation system. Um, what is that? Um, yeah, so that is, like I was um, mentioning before, uh, you have those field officer units, mm -hmm. um, and they're sort, they sort of drive the, the activation system. So you'll take turns activating the field officers, and they can order your other units to go alongside them, basically. Okay, okay. And does that cost anything? Is that like a you have, like you were talking about those tokens? Do you have to spend a token to do that, or is it just something you can do on your turn? Um, yeah. So resource management is an important part of the game as well. So, sure. um, like I mentioned, um, all of your troops have action tokens that they can spend, um, and they can use those to do special abilities or move or attack or um, you know, there's a list of things they can do. And kind of sequencing those actions in the most efficient order is an important part of the strategy. Um, right. But your officers will also have order tokens, um, and they can spend them either to uh, essentially, you know, buff the troops around them. They'll have special abilities they can use those for, um, or you can spend them to just order more guys. So uh, you can choose between, you know, having a more effective um, activation with some buffs, uh, or you know, just going for for a quantity over quality, basically. Right. So right. If, if if you're the if you're the bug. Uh... I'm sorry. What do they call it again? The, the volume crit host. Yeah, yep. the volume crit. If if they're using themselves as um, as resources, can you eat some of your troops and heal other troops? Absolutely. Yep. Whoa, yeah. Yes! For sure. Yes! <laughs> yeah. So um, they they can do a couple things with um, uh, they have an action called consume, uh, which picks a friendly within two inches and kills them. Um, and it it does a couple different things. It gives them um, a resource called fury tokens, which are um, essentially action tokens you can only spend on attacks. So they're sort of a a less powerful version of a regular action token. Um, and you get more of those for eating people. Uh, you also can also heal uh, hit points off your guys. And some units can um, spend those fury tokens to do special abilities. For example, um, they have a unit called a spitter, um, which has an AOE attack. Uh, and it can use the fury tokens it gets from eating his buddies to enhance the power of his attack. So essentially he'll, um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll bite down on the little guy and he'll use his components to, uh, to fuel up his, uh, his gun there. Mm. God damn. That is a rough, that is a rough army to be in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not if you're a commander. 
Not yeah. a recommend. <laughs> no kidding. Rank has privilege, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, so, I love it. I love it. Um, okay. All right. Fantastic. So, um, uh, one more thing. What would, uh, so you'd listen. There was advanced equipment. What are some of the advanced equipment that you can get? Uh, yeah. So there's um, yeah. There's just sort of upgrade cards. Um, they're not necessarily equipment, but uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with those. Um, there are cards that represent sort of particular traits of the soldier in particular. Um, so those are things like you can be exceptionally resilient and you can, you know, recover from damage that you've taken. Uh, you can be cautious. And, uh, if you're in cover, you know, you'll take less damage from attacks because you're better at taking cover. Um, or you can be brazen. And when you're out in the open, you're more resistant to, uh, to getting shot at because you're a little more headstrong. Um, there's also, uh, for example, the Homeworld Confederacy units have specialized ammunition they can load their guns with that'll have different effects. Okay. Um, the Zrenthrar Prides faction are sort of very spiritual. They have like, a code of honor that tells them to die gloriously in battle. And so they'll have um, a, a, a number of oaths that their units can take that will give them different ben benefits during the, the, uh, the game. And all of those are represented on your upgrade cards. Nice, nice. nice. And how long, did you, how long did you say it takes to play a game? It's usually about an hour, about 60 about an minutes. Hour. Okay. And you've run this at Total Con, apparently, right? Because uh, Jonathan was telling me that that's yeah. where I think he first saw you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were at Total Con um, last year. Okay. Oh, so not this past year, but the year not before. this past year. No, unfortunately, okay. it sold out before we before we oh. got a ticket. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's getting uh -oh. yeah yeah. Total Con is getting getting pretty full up. Um, and and what do you think? I love Total Con. Um, do you have a really good experience there? Yeah, it was all right. Um, I. People, it was a little more board game centric, I think. So um, I don't know if we got the, we didn't get quite as much of the reception as we did in, in some more miniature uh, game focused okay. um, conventions. But um, right. yeah, it was fun. It was a fun weekend for sure. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Um, all right. So let's give out some, let's give out some links here. Uh, of course, you can go to breachstorm.com, right? That's, that would be like the main place you could go. Or you yep. could go to this Kickstarter page. Um, and if, if they type in breach storm, cause it's a really long link here. If they just, <laughs> if they just yeah. there's, there's a link right at the top. If you go to breachstorm.com, there's a link right there for the Kickstarter. So you can just jump right over if you want to. Um, and you can also, uh, if you want to check out the rules, the whole game is, uh, you know, print and play off of our website as well. You can get, you know, oh, yeah, all the rules and the that. templates and, um, the cards for the, the miniatures, um, and even standees that you can cut out, um, for, uh, everything in the game, so you can you can play it for free if you really wanted to. Okay, that's really cool. I like free. No, but, no, but that's actually really cool. <laughs> the no, best somebody, price. Somebody, you know, if they're thinking about man, it's like you know, I got, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna drop a buck twenty on this thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm, you know, really ready to 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 pay that. They could actually download the rules. They could play it and say, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe I do. Maybe I yep. do. Yep. They're Absolutely. good looking miniatures. I mean, I, from you know, you can see the pictures on here and. Uh, I was looking at them. I could zoom in on them on my computer when when you, you sent me the the link to them. Uh, they're pretty, and whoever's doing the sculpt on these is fairly fairly talented. They're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. Three D sculptors are um, they're like dark magicians. Like they'll take images and bizarre concepts and turn them into reality. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, Mike, we got a little bit of. Uh, hey, go back this Kickstarter. It looks really cool. Uh, Mike, you got a. You you want to do a thing with the uh, about the draft real quick? Oh, you want to do draft before the game? Yeah, let's do draft before the game real quick. Okay, all right. Uh, crap, I wish I'd have known that. I might have had. Like, okay, no, uh, all right. We'll do we'll do draft after the game. That's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump. I I saw the note in here. I thought you were ready for it. <laughs> oh uh, no, I just was gonna say because you did such a great picture there. So uh, are you like that? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so Trevor, if you're not familiar, we, we have a, a box office draft we did and it's like a football pool, right? Um, where you, but you, but you use movies. So you pick movies and you try <laughs> and build the best team of movies and, and you add their revenue together, but you only have a certain amount of money to buy each one and we bid on it. Uh, so you have to, you have to be careful how you bid and how you buy things. And um, that's cool. Somebody got Avengers in game for a Ridiculously, Ew. disgustingly low price, you ass. Hey, you all were bidding. You all could have bid for it. It was Somebody early on. Somebody fucked up. Somebody <laughs> fucked up. Well, I'll tell you that right now. All right, well, so let me see. I am. Uh, 
but I do a graphic every every week with the with the the bar the, the the line chart in it showing where everybody is. And on this one, there's a humongous jump where yeah, I like am. A, it's like a huge hard on. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a look at that. It's like a boner out of nowhere. <laughs> it goes from 21 million to 496 million. Like boy, oy, 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 oy. and uh, the snap, I, I got it. Pete, the snap is just—it's classic. I love it. That, you like that nice oh, little yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you deserve that, bud. Yeah. So, and I, I also. Oh, and uh, this this is the right time to say this too. You'll hear at the end of the uh, video. I always say, and um, stay tuned for the movie draft minute. Since ninety percent of everyone listens to this on audio, when I do the audio, I cut a special audio. Uh, performance that is edited and, and it's nice and tight and it's got music behind it um, that doesn't mess me up when I talk um, and uh, so you can hear these every week if you go and actually subscribe to our podcast on audio even if you watch this live it's still worth it because uh, even if you just scrub to the end um, we'll still get the download <laughs> but you can also um, listen to the movie draft minute every week so that's a yeah. that's a bonus anyway Mike is very Mike is very proud of it, Mike uh, is very proud. Yeah, a little, a right. little, a little proud. Well, Trevor's going to play a game with us. Oh, you so, uh, all right, all right. Well, that that can only mean one thing. Do you do you hear that music? Maybe, maybe you hear that music. I don't know if I, I said do. it to play. Like, I hear the music. Yeah, but it's, I don't know if they hear the music. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master this week, and this week we are playing Bet the Geek. Uh, I have taken question from my game, Cube of Death. Uh, each round, I will ask Trevor or Mike, or, and or Mike, a question. Um, and Mike, we're going to play this a little differently. I'm not going to do the the bet on uh, whether they know it or not. I'm just we're gonna we're gonna do this as a as a trivia challenge. Ah, you son so, of a bitch! All right, yeah, I'm just gonna be able to sit back and ah, all right, fine. <laughs> Now we're gonna do this a trivia challenge. So I'm gonna ask each of you a question. Mike, can you fix the 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 image on here? This it's all jacked up. Uh, oh geez, that's yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. How did that happen? I don't know. Uh, anyway, so what we're gonna do, Trevor? I'll, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you four categories to choose from. You get to pick the category, and then I'll ask you a trivia question from that category. Mike, can you please fix the screen? Uh, it, it's fixed so far. I think it just needs okay. to. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, so I'll ask you a question or I'll, I'll, I'll give you four categories. Uh, I'll ask you a question from that category. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, uh, you get no points. Um, and Mike, <laughs> I'll do the same. It's real simple. Strong, real, real simple. strong rule. I like it. Yeah. Real right. simple. Yeah. Hey, hey, um, Pete. hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. By the way, hey, kudos for just changing up right at the last minute. Appreciate you, bud. Well. Yeah, I hadn't looked at that file. This is all we're we're out of sorts here. We're everything is all mixed up. This is this is you know. Hey, we're I'm winging with, it. I'm it's go chaos. With flow, go with the flow, kind of guy. Me, I don't mind. I'm I'm all for it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's start with um, let's start. We'll go, Mike. I'm gonna have you go first because we'll show Trevor how it's done. All right, that's Why fine. Why is this thing done? All right. So, Mike, your categories are uh, anime, Tarantino verse, so all things Quentin Tarantino, yeah. board games, or Discworld. Uh, uh, anime, Tarantino verse, board games, or Discworld. Let's go board games. Board games. Yeah. All right. What fantasy football game released in 1986 by Games Workshop had a light version called? Crunch, released in 1991. Huh? <laughs> could, could you repeat the question? Yes, I can repeat the question. What fantasy football game released in 1986 by Games Workshop had a light version called Crunch, released in 1991? All right, I'm gonna... People still play it. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's I, I an know, old game. I know, and and and. Oh, so I'm going to go with a, a guess, and, and what's screwing with me is uh, I keep thinking of Grid Breakers because we interviewed our, our buds uh, from um, comic, from, from, from Offshoot Comics. Offshoot comics so yeah. my guess is not Grid Breakers. My guess is I'm going to go with Gridiron. 
Gridiron. Mike, I'm sorry, and I don't have sound yeah. effects, everybody, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, the answer is Blood Bowl. Uh, oh, Blood Bowl. that yeah. game. Oh. Yeah. All right, Trevor, you're up. Trevor, do you want modern video games, Marvel Cinematic Universe, Princess Bride, or Greek mythology? Oh, son of a bitch. He, he stacks them like this. <laughs> He's like, hey, here's all the ones Mike wants. I'm just going to the next card. That's oh, all you. Let's, let's say Endgame was the last movie that I watched. So let's go MCU. MCU for 400, oh. Alex. Mike, you're gonna punch me in the the boys. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. What is the Black Panther's real name? Uh, T'Challa. That is correct. Yes. Uh, correct. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, hey, Trevor, how does baby food taste? Yeah, I know, right? It's wonderful. <laughs> All right, it's good. so Listen, good. I good. like the little sausages. Yeah, yeah, well. All right, Mike, hold on. <laughs> Let me go to the next card. Yeah, the, next the next card. card. See, are you going to like this next card? Randomly chosen just for me. They are. No, they're just in order. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're only yeah. in order. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Gen X cartoons, horror, Norse mythology, or Marvel comics? Hmm. Gen X cartoons. That's us, man. That's these are cartoons I, you grew up on. With, uh, oh, you're leading the witness. I'm not. Oh, I'm just saying. Bitch, that's what that is. Just I'm so you know what Gen X cartoons is. I know what a Gen. Is. All right, motherfucker. Give me Gen X cartoons. No, I don't want to give you that one. No, all right. All right sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the name of Thundar the Barbarian's signature weapon? Oh fuck me. It's not that. I didn't like Thundar the Barbarian. I'm get so out. glad I didn't get these questions. Oh my get God. out. Get out. Uh, all right. Peace. Um, yeah, I'm like, Thunder, Thunder was the best. It was, I, I, I know the sword. Yeah. I, it's the sword, but what was it called? Uh, yeah, that's the trivia part of it. Uh, ass Cracker. That was called Ass Cracker. The sword Ass Cracker. Um, he may have called it that when he was uh, hanging out with Tila, but no, it was called the Sun Sword. Sun Sword. Uh, the sun sword. sword. Whatever. Sun Sword. Okay. All right. Next question, <laughs> Trevor. Robotech, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or well, Hitchhiker's Guide. It could be any one of the books. Uh, Monty Python or RPGs. Hmm. Let's go Hitchhiker's Guide. Hitchhiker's Guide. I'm feeling good. Who hitchhikes off Earth with Ford Prefect? Um, that would be his name's Arthur. I forget his last name. Is well, it Dent? I, yes, that oh, is absolutely yeah. correct. Good. I wouldn't have good gotten one. it, but that's yeah. good. I, I think that movie it. was just on Netflix, so I watched it a couple months ago. Oh, so. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> you mean you mean the the book you read, right? No. The book, I did read all the yeah. books, but that was yeah, in high school. Okay. So, okay. oh my god, all right, Mike. I do not remember all that stuff. Mike, Mike, yes. oh, you comic me. books, old school tunes. Now, old school is pre Gen X. Just shut up. Horror or Monopoly? Uh, you 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 pick those trick questions in Monopoly. Uh. Mm. That said, what was the first one again? Comic books, old school tunes, horror, or Monopoly? All right, I'll go for Monopoly. Monopoly. How many railroads are there on a standard Monopoly board? Four. Yay. How's that baby food? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Some of these are easy. Some Ooh. of these are easy. Ooh, it's banana. I love banana. I'm taking these from the basic set. I didn't want to like oh, give you guys the advantage. I know, I know. Hey, Trevor, what you have to understand is there are a myriad of levels of questions. So yes, um, they're they're smattering. So just, yes. All this, right. This is this is from a game I'm kickstarting next month. I'm ready all for right. the railroad to hit all me. Right. All right. So all right, Trevor. DC Comics, chemistry. Yes, chemistry as in science chemistry. Poker or classic video games. Oh no, this is probably the one that kills me, you guys. Um. Ooh, classic chemistry, video games yeah. are sort of like the seventies, eighties. All right, chemistry. You you sure yeah. you want chemistry? Okay. I'm I'm in. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> what is the most common element in the universe? Hydrogen. That is correct. Oh my Damn, gosh, I did it. Ding. Like it. Very nice. Excellent. Answered that one. I, I know you had sort of a question about that, but you like just spit that out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say you knew that heartily. 
Hi, Mike. Chichin. Hi, Easy. Mike? Yes. Modern cartoons, board games, D&D, or geek, not Greek, geek cinema. Oh, just because I want to, I want to, sh- oh, I want D&D. Oh, that's right. I said it. Give me the D&D question. Okay. Oh, you'll get the yours. D and D. You're going to get, you're going to hate this one. You're going to get the D. All right. So this, Mike, <laughs> this question is one that a, that a, a, someone who plays D and D a lot would, would be able to just snap out. Yeah. 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 According to the, to five E SRD. So that's like the basic oh, yeah, yeah. rules. The fifth edition, how bro. many, yeah. how many rounds does a dancing weapon attack once activated? Oh, it's four. No problem. It's four. Final Holy answer. Holy shit. Four. Yeah. You knew that. No, you know I, that? Yeah. I didn't. I totally guessed. Oh, did I fucking guess? I just went, whoop, four. Wow, nice. Good job. Good guess. Yeah, thank you. All right, Trevor. It's baby's day out for me. <laughs> this is this is my, my daughter's card. So oh, this no. card, this is card 10. It's, it's 1008, so 1008, which is her birthday. Um, so I let her. These are all categories that she loves. So here you go. So Harry I get Potter. beat up if I get it wrong? Is that what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, Stranger Things, Gravity Falls, or Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, well, I already got Marvel Cinematic Universe, so let's not do that one. Uh, um, take, take what you can get, bro. Take, you can let's take go you Harry Potter. Harry Potter. I'm, I'm calling it Ooh. Harry okay. Potter. Ooh. Why is Hermione Granger looked down upon by some wizards? Uh, because she's a uh, mud blood. Yes, that is correct. She is nice. muggle born, Yay. also known as a mud blood. Very uh, good. I wish that I knew what the hell. Your ass, Mike. I hey, knew. Just... I wish. I wish I knew what the hell the words that just came out of your mouth meant. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So for the audience who can't see the score because Mike doesn't have it up, and you know, and the and the the audio audience, uh, Mike has two points. Trevor has four. We'll do two more. Okay. All right. Let's Actually, we'll tie do... it up. Let's do three so Mike can stand a chance to win. We'll go through them quick. All, All right. right, so we're at Mike. Mike, Marvel Comics, Technology, Scrabble, or Breaking Bad? Oh, holy fuck, Breaking Bad. That's a new one. Oh, you like that? But it's been yeah. so long, and I'll, I'll, I'll know it. It'll be on the tip of my tongue, so I'm just going <laughs> to go. And then you'll, hear it. you'll yeah. hear it, and you'll go, God damn it. Right? So, so, so do you, does anyone, you guys want to hear that? I mean, it's always good when I do that, right? All right, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. Breaking Bad. All right. Go. Yeah, Breaking Bad. What secret ingredient does Jesse Pinkman put in his meth? Oh, chili pepper. Is it, will, will you accept chili pepper or t- Tabasco or something? I'll, chili pepper is close enough. Chili okay. powder chili or chili powder. Or Chili P, as he oh, calls man. it. Oh, that's right. Chili P. Good. All right. Hey. Yeah. Nice. Good job, Mike. Good Thank job. You. Nice. Thank you. You reached, you reached into the big old back brain. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, old school sci-fi, modern sci-fi, Star Wars, or Star Trek? I had to go with a space theme on this one because it's 1010, so 1010. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love it. So um, old, old school sci-fi, modern sci-fi, Star Wars, or Star Trek? All right. Well, let's uh, let's keep things interesting. Let's go modern sci-fi. All right. In the series Babylon Five, this is where he goes. Ah, oh, fuck. The series begins with four alien races. Name two of them. Uh, the Centauri and the Mimbari. Correct. Yeah. Mimbari, Narn, Centauri, and Vorlons. Oh, come on! Very you wouldn't have accepted good. humans. Come on. That's aliens. Not aliens, though. Alien. Yeah, alien. Well, Very someone, specific question. somebody's an alien somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. <laughs> TMNT, biology, Gen X cartoons, or classic sci-fi? I'll take TMNT, biology. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, shit. All right. Uh, what were the last That'd two be an again? an awesome game on Kickstarter. I'm yeah, <laughs> TMNT, biology. Like, we Let's should just take these one. categories, and you just pick two of them at random, and you have to make a Kickstarter. Uh, from that product, that would be a, oh, anyway. All right, so, Mike, Gen X cartoons, yeah, classic writing sci-fi. that down right now. <laughs> classic sci fi, classic sci fi. All right, in the movie Alien Nation, the aliens are a race called the Tectonese. What are they referred to by the general public? Uh, 
The Schmegmas. Final answer. The Schmegmas. <laughs> Schmegmas. Is, sorry, Mike. That is not correct. They are called oh, the no, newcomers. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm challenging. I'm challenging. No, I'm just kidding. I They're called, called the newcomers. The, ooh, oh. All right, remember that? that? Well, that's close to Schmeg. Uh, oh, so, see? Um, <laughs> see? <laughs> Trevor. DC half Comics. A point. Half a point. No, no half points. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wrap it up with this one DC Comics, Tolkien verse, poker, or modern sci fi? Oh, man. Um, let's go. Let's go Tolkien verse. Okay. What material resembles silver, is stronger than steel? and is only found in the mines of Moria during the Third Age. Mithril. Mithril is correct. And it's oh. funny because I had to put that uh, only found in the mines of Moria during the Third Age because of the island Num Num Numeria. Numenor. Num or Numenor or whatever. I think it was. Uh, went that used, They used, used to be able to get it from there, but it went under. Right. So uh, yeah, all that. Which we'll see they, in that new Amazon show. We will. The new Amazon show looks really cool. <laughs> so that said... Uh, Trevor, you had a perfect score. You didn't get a single one wrong. Whoa, you nice. had a six. Very good. And you get, we don't have the music, right, Mike? But we can do the... Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mike's, da, 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 Mike's three. You da, you pwned da, da, him. Da, da, da. Mike, Mike, Mike. I'm In fairness to my esteemed opponent, his questions were harder, I think, so... Thank you. Well... well it was at random. It was random. That's how trivia goes. Uh, exactly. Trivia goes. I just picked more skillfully yeah, so based on the randomness. It's the so really, that's where that came in. It's the, that is part. Listen, that is part <laughs> of the strategy of Cube of Death. It really is. That's one of the strategies. <laughs> yeah. One of the strategies. Better lucky than good, boys and girls. That's right. It's not the hardness of the question. It's the muggle of the woggle. Yeah, or something like that. All right. So everybody, look. Trevor's been an awesome guest. Uh, Jonathan, I don't have to punch you in the balls when I see you at uh, Total Con. You were absolutely <laughs> right. Trevor was great. Uh, go to BreachStorm.com to check out BreachStorm. It looks really, really cool. Uh, and then find it on Kickstarter at BreachStorm. All the links are in the show notes already. I do believe. I think, Mike, if not, they will be. Yes, um, check out those notes. Yeah, just just go to Kickstarter, type in BreachStorm. It'll come up, I'm sure. Yep. Um, and it is it is definitely up. Uh, it's... it's uh... I don't know where I, I don't know which way it would be. Maybe it's that way. I think it's that right. way. But if my screen is reversed, then it's that way. Right. Um, <laughs> um, ne ne next to the um, yeah, next to the window there. You'll see it. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, Mike. Ready to do the closer? Uh, get out. We'll see. Here right. we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, Make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to follow us or share your favorite episode on social media. And follow us on social media to help spread the Mythwits love over the entire planet. Again, I say, well, we'll just take an acre. If you spread our love evenly over just, a, just an acre, that we can cover an acre thickly, uh, as it were. Tweet us at Mythwits. <laughs> Just not all over, out. hey Mike. Just not all over a cracker, because no. that is a different game. Uh, that's that's a sword. Uh, anyway, right. um, Mythwits is produced by Aetherforge Creations and as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out tsrpn.com and aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't change it, and 3D print it into an action figure. And definitely don't cut its base off. It's just It just comes out as poop emoji every time. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in, and we'll see you next Monday. And uh, Pete? Look, don't buy any more goddamn miniatures until you paint the fucking miniatures you have. Unless you're buying Trevor's. Buy his. <laughs>